Welcome to the Danny Carlson Podcast, your resource for growing the business and mindset for a life of unrestricted freedom. Now here's your host, online marketing acrobat, Danny Carlson. So Dewan Bainey is a friend of mine who has been successful in building his agency and he pays himself six figures from this agency, but he's also been successful with Kindle publishing and also online coaching and YouTube. So he has a vast experience in digital marketing. This episode is going to go really into emotional intelligence and specifically using emotional intelligence to create business relationships and 99% of Dewan's SEO clients have come from these relationships. So we're going to dive into his, I don't want to say strategies, but more of a mindset for building business relationships and building a successful agency off of social capital in general. So if you're interested in that, this is going to be a really good one to dive into. So let's get into Dewan Bainey. What is up guys? Danny Carlson here, and this is the Danny Carlson podcast. And we have here a friend of mine who has a lot of different experience growing online agencies. And if you guys are following me, you know I'm a big proponent of online agencies. And I think right now during this crazy COVID times is one of the best times where these kind of businesses are going to become way more in demand over the next six months, over the next year, as a lot of business owners are forced to face the fact that they need to up their game in digital marketing, right? As a lot of businesses right now are going out of business or are faced with going out of business if they don't move to much more digital ways of doing things. So D1 is a, is a good friend of mine, hung out with me here in Bali, I actually convinced him to leave Vancouver and come hang out in <laughs> Bali. We're uh, definitely enjoyed himself for some months. So really excited to dive into this one. How's it going, D1? Good brother, uh, really good. And yeah, man, uh, talk about getting red pilled going to Bali. Uh, we were just laughing before the call about how much I miss it, I want to get back up, back out there. But uh, yeah, this current landscape with the, uh, you know, the quarantine is, it's made a lot of businesses shift. And uh, yeah, I think this is a good talk, man. It's a, uh, it definitely is a skill set that is going to be in crazy demand coming up. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, by the way, is that, is that your motorcycle helmet from Bali back there? Yeah, I ended up bringing it home. Would you believe that? Ah, uh, it's freaking awesome. And you got, you have a motorcycle there in Vancouver as well? I don't have anything yet. No, I'm, uh, I'm getting the super fix. I've got a, I got a turbo super. So I'm going to get that fixed, hopefully sell it and then, uh, boot around on a bike, maybe a little bit for the summer, but I'm telling you, man, I want to come back to Bali. So try to get rid of shit, not, uh, not, <laughs> not accumulate it. Heck yeah. Well, we will have a good motorcycle ride whenever you can get back here, whenever the situation yeah. improves. But I think a good place to start off this interview is with your story in general, like how did you really even get into this whole world of building agencies? Like, did, was it one of your friends who just introduced this opportunity? And like, was there some major event in your life that just forced you to, to start off and dive into this world? What was it? Yeah, and I don't want to go too far down the rabbit hole here, but um, I've been working online for full time for approximately seven years, maybe, maybe a little bit longer than that. Um, and when I mean, I've, I've done it all, I've done it all. Um, you know, ebooks, physical products, um, service-based stuff. Uh, you know, I've done, I've done coaching. I've had a mastermind group. So I've, I've kind of tasted all the fruit, you know? Um, but yeah, to rewind, I, I moved to Vancouver, uh, 10 years ago, um, was working like a car rental place. So really a crappy job, had really no plan and, uh, fell in love with the music industry out here. Uh, I actually wanted to be a DJ producer. And uh, just couldn't figure out the money thing. So anyways, uh, started a corporate job, was working there for about a year and a half. And um, just wasn't happy. Ultimately, wanted to be in control of my life. Didn't really have a, a plan and um, quit cold turkey and went uh, and started a record label of all things. So that was really my first like, okay, oh shit, no job, no money coming in, have to make this work. Um, and again, realized very quickly that... Uh, you know, you create products, but it doesn't mean that people are going to purchase it. So, um, gun to my head, I had to kind of just figure out digital marketing, right? I was, I was broke. And at the time, you know, there wasn't really tons of courses or YouTube videos to really learn it. So, you know, you're on WSO forums buying $7 eBooks and, and things like that, just to try <laughs> to get the secret sauce. Right. And, uh, so I did that for about six months, uh, was completely dead broke. And, um, ended up finding the Kindle publishing opportunity. Uh, I don't know if you remember Stefan James here in Vancouver, but uh, 
in a nutshell, publishing eBooks on Amazon. Amazon's got its own platform uh, where you can upload a product. And because they have traffic, it makes it a hell of a lot easier. And that was really my first taste of SEO. I run an SEO and PPC agency here in Vancouver. But uh, for the first time, I kind of started to understand what internet traffic really was and that uh, th those that can control traffic can kind of write their own meal ticket. And that's ultimately why Amazon is, is such a successful platform. Um, anyway, so I built that up, was having a ton of fun, but I, deep down, I was missing that kind of personal connection. Um, you know, for the people that know me in person, I'm, I'm quite the extrovert and, uh, uh, hiding behind my computer all day was actually not fulfilling as much as the money coming in was great. I was just sort of missing that. Um, yeah, that personal interaction to be able to like feel the result of the effort that I was going in, you know, see that smile on somebody's face or like hear the story of success. So. Uh, I moved to digital products, started a bit of a YouTube channel for myself, helping people, you know, launch their own physical product, but sorry, uh, digital business and, uh, really ran into a, a brick wall. Um, I, I was working 40, 50 hours a week just on that kind of, you know, helping people create a passion based business type thing. And, uh, in hindsight, the biggest mistake that I realized is that you can't change people. Um, people are just mm -hmm. kind of where they are in their life and, because I was able to quit my corporate job and have an online, an online business. I felt like, man, if they just followed the steps, uh, they could have the, the same life as well. And, um, yeah, I didn't really think this, this talk would go this direction, but, uh, yeah. Like was, what, what were some of the roadblocks that your students or the people you're following? Like, what were they coming up against? Cause this is something I've experienced as well. I'm really curious to hear your experiences. Yeah. You know, I, it's such a cliche where, where you hear, oh, it's 90% mindset and 10% execution or, or you know, 10% what you know. And self-sabotage, uh, imposter syndrome, who am I to put a, you know, a course together on meal prep or, or working out? Um, you know, they would see somebody else that was, in their eyes, wildly successful. You know, let's just say Elliot Hulse, right? He's got strength camp, like a, you know, the, the working out channel. And it's like, well, if Elliot's done it, why should I go do it? Like it's already been there. It's done that. And I think what it really came down to bro was uh, identity shift and looking back, that's really what I think it was. They, they identified as somebody that was, you know, I work a job or I, I work a nine to five and it was really the people that just honestly burnt the bridge or were just in so much pain or enough pain to actually change their identity to go all in. And it wasn't for lack of work ethic. It's just, it really, I think came down to that identity shift. Like I, I am worthy and uh, I am of value and that I can help people. And if they could like figure that out at its core and like really shift their identity to, to serving, that's where I think the, the X factor came in. But, um, well, and before we get back to your, your story where we left off there, I'm really curious to hear like, where was that shift for you? Was that when you were dead broke and the, the, uh, mm. the first business was not working out. You just like had a, had the gun to your head. Like a lot of people in that situation, they go crawling back to their nine to five job and they'd call it a day. Right. But you didn't do that. Yeah. And I'm, um, I'm actually not very money motivated. I, uh, I, I grew up in the hospitality industry, uh, with my family, uh, again, very poor. None of us had any money. And, um, I felt disconnected in my corporate job. It was a great business. We were doing great work. It was, it was very, clean, wholesome work, but like, I wanted to be in control of like helping people, man. I think that's what it really came down to at the end of the day. And like, I just didn't want to go back. I was so sick of feeling dead inside, like just showing up and doing a thing because I have to do the thing. Uh, you know, we could use the buzzword freedom, but it was, yeah, I just, it was that, I just, I didn't want to go back. There was just no version of going back. And, and it's, it's that, yeah, I guess gun to the head where it's like, you're standing in front of that semi truck and like, you got to get out of the way or else you're going to get mowed over. And, um, I think you need that. You need that kind of all in and like make a decision, not just like, Oh, I'm trying this out. Like, no, like make a decision to change your life and then just do it. Hmm. Yeah, absolutely love that. And it was definitely a similar situation with me where it's like, I was just in a situation where I just needed to make it happen. Like financially, yeah. the failure of a previous business put myself $20,000 in debt. And yeah. I was faced with, hey, do I go back to work in carpentry? And it's going to take me like a year to pay off that debt. Or 
I can just go all in on this next thing. And then like, at least I have the chance of paying that back within a much shorter time frame, And then I have the skill sets to make a much larger amount of money on top of that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Uh, and that's the other thing that was fascinating. It's like, you just use the right exact word there skill sets. It's like, even if I do this and it's not, uh, you know, successful in whatever fashion you try to communicate that it's like, man, these skills are so valuable that I could just transfer on to the next thing versus, you know, me answering support tickets at some X, Y, Z corporate job isn't like, I'm never going to progress. It's just, this is what it is, you know? And, uh, that was the part that sickened me with my corporate job was just this, this was it. This is your box. This is where you live. Yeah. You can't grow in a situation like that. Right. So let's get back to your story of where you were. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think we left off right when you had had just were diving into the digital marketing thing for the first time. Yeah, so so I was again helping helping people <coughs> transition from their corporate job to to a um, you know a passion based business, whatever. And uh, I was struggling. I you know my heart was in it. I had the skills, but uh, and and this will definitely segue into scaling, uh, scaling agency after. But I was serving the wrong people. And, um, I couldn't see it at the time, but I wasn't really picking the ideal clients. It was just anybody that wanted to work with me. I'd have them work with me. And, um, there's a local entrepreneur in the city called Dan Locke. Um, I'm sure some people are familiar with him. So he had a mastermind group in the city. And when I joined that, um, that's what really shifted me to, um, the service based business. Now, uh, the advice was really simple. It was help winners win more. And uh, I'll never forget that, that advice. And ultimately, you know, if you're, if you're running a business, uh, if you're selling to people that are in startup or maybe don't have money, it's very difficult to sustain your own business if they don't have any revenue to, to pay you. Right. And it doesn't matter how much you, you love them or help them at the end of the day, a, a business needs, needs income in order to be able to serve and scale for a long term. And, uh, the agency business, in my opinion, is probably the most direct path to make $10,000 a month. Like you, mm -hmm. you legitimately could do it in 30 days. Uh, if you're just clear about what you do and, and you're offering and, and you have a little bit of skill set. And, uh, the more I started diving into this agency model, yes, there's challenges. I mean, taking on 30 clients a month is very difficult. I think all of us agency owners can agree. Uh, there is sort of a sweet spot, but if you become specialized at something and you're targeting a business that already has revenue, already has a product that's selling in the marketplace and already has a form of traffic, all you have to do is improve their business, maybe 10 or 15% and very easily make a thousand to $1,500 a month without having to stress about selling them. They understand your value. And it was just like, boom, light bulb moment for me. And the best part for me is that I can also like see and touch and, and see my customer, right? And it's like, if I help a gym, not only am I seeing the gym owner being happy, but also the 400 people that are working out at their gym as well, getting healthy too. So in a way, it's like this beautiful ripple effect or butterfly effect where I can actually tangibly see it. And that's why I'm super, super passionate about these service style businesses. Um, and, you know, as much as it could be a love or hate relationship, I, I don't see myself ever getting out of the, the client services business. It's just, uh, it just ticks so many boxes for me. Yeah, well, that's such a key point you're making about selling to the right person too, because that's a big shift that I made in my agency maybe a year and a half or two years ago. In the beginning, we're just selling to uh, mostly beginner Amazon sellers, people who were launching the very first product yeah. and they had really small budgets compared to a lot of brands who they're already successful, they're launching products, they need our services anyway, and they're probably gonna be launching more products in the future again much more quickly. And if you're selling to them, those are your repeat customers and they're going to be way easier to deal with than the yes. newer customers and they're going to pay you more money. So it's a, it's a win-win situation. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, there's only three ways to grow a business. Ultimately, you either get more customers, which is what most people focus on online. For some reason, these internet marketers, more customers, more customers, more customers. Uh, number two is increased frequency of purchases, which is the part that I love the most. The, the beautiful thing about the agency model is once you've, you've sold the customer, you've, had, you've built relationship, and relationship is key, they're on retainer with you. You don't have to keep selling them every month. So 
you know, you, you're not, you're not playing this prospecting and selling game. Now, again, everybody's agencies are a little bit different. I know that you're a little bit more one off, but, uh, yeah, frequency of purchase makes it the easiest thing. And then the last thing is obviously price. So, uh, if you focus on recurring and increased price, higher premium clients, so you can actually serve more. Like once you kind of go through that, it's it, like it, it, same thing. It doubled my agency in 60 days as soon as I made that shift. Yeah. Absolutely big mindset shift there. And then so at this point, are you now you're diving into the agency? And was it the current agency that you're you're running now? Is that the start of this SEO agency? Yeah, so I um I went ahead and also purchased uh purchased a access to a fairly expensive SEO mastermind group. Um and that's one other piece of advice. Don't like just don't do this alone. There's there are so many intricacies of this business. I mean, at the front end, it's pretty simple, you know, run Facebook ads or do X, Y, Z service for people. But if you can find somebody that already has the successful system slash mindset, have, you know, have hired some employees, et cetera, et cetera, just, just buy the information, honestly. Uh, Cause I don't know how I would have done this uh, by myself, but no, the first iteration of the agency was um, I was just doing local clients and uh my first actual sale was a, was a coffee shop in Cole Harbor. So uh, for those people that are not in Vancouver, uh, Cole Harbor is a really quaint little area, but it's really just kind of foot traffic. It's not super busy. And, you know, I was trying to rank them for Vancouver coffee shop and in hindsight, looking back at it, I'm like, man, why did I ever take that on as a client? Um, but uh, I charged them $500 a month. And to be honest, I had no idea what I was doing. I understood SEO at its whole, but I just got my feet wet and, and basically guaranteed him that in some way or another, I'm going, I'm going to make you this money back. And, uh, we eventually did for sure. Uh, but you know, I started to learn my craft. Like if you're looking for a coffee shop, you're not necessarily going to go onto Google and, uh, and, um, search best coffee shop, Vancouver, right? Like there's certain types of clients that, uh, take better to SEO. So it was a, it was a slow, a slow process. And, um, I think it's, I got up to about five clients locally when I started looking at my first, um, kind of outsourced staff to start, start taking care of some of the more tedious work. Um, I went through a, uh, a fairly rough time. I, I went through a, a pretty bad breakup. I was with a girl for eight years and, uh, anyways, long story short, we were going to get married the whole jam and, and that fell through. And, uh, so I didn't even really grow the agency for quite some time. But again, the beauty of the relationships that get built with an agency, you don't have to constantly sell. So I was actually able to just hit maintenance mode for six to eight months. And um, yeah, once I kind of got out of that, I, again, I just started focusing on hiring, hiring clients. Um, I do want to talk about pricing structure after in a second, but ultimately I just came down to, I started increasing my prices. And as I increased my pricing, funny enough, I actually got better clients who are easier to work with who I could get results for faster versus trying to pinch such a tiny little budget and you'd have to like rack your brain, you know, like how am I going to squeeze sales at a $500 budget versus if you get two or three or $5,000, it, you can actually like help a business, you know, versus these tiny little budgets. But um, yeah, yeah well, that's kind of been the sense. trajectory. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm really curious to hear one of the questions I get the most often is your strategy for finding the clients. I know it's, um, we mentioned a few things like everyone's always focused on just finding more customers, finding more customers, but at the same time, it's important. You need to find more customers to grow, to grow a business if you, if you don't have any, right? So like what have been your best strategies for finding those new clients for the SEO agency? Yeah. So I am, uh, I'm a relationships as everybody type of person. I, I believe that a lot of people have the internet, uh, wrong where they, they see it as, oh, hey guys, like, oh, there's a thousand people watching this. Well, in reality, it's actually only one person that's watching us right now, multiplied a thousand times. And I've used my social media and, and honestly just local connections in the city to, uh, to farm for it. Uh, your first one or two clients are going to be difficult. You may have to cold call, you may have to knock on doors, you may need to go to networking events. Um, literally the coffee shop was, a client like it was the coffee shop that I go to almost every morning and I would just shoot the shit with the business owner and when I launched the SEO agency I'm like hey let me do your SEO so even that wasn't really a cold sale um, 
I would say 95% of my, 99% of my clients have come through social circle or, or relationships coming in. Like, uh, if you look at my website right now, and I mean, this is being as transparent as I possibly can. It's not even really that good. Nobody's coming onto my website to buy a cold, but uh, you know, I have so many friends that are business owners and I've, I've narrowed my skill set down. And that's one, one, one other big piece of advice. Like, if you're a generalist agency for all people, good luck. That's when it becomes very difficult. Mm -hmm. But, mm -hmm. you know, in the case of, of Kenji, it's like, are you an Amazon seller who's already launched a product, who needs video content, copy? Like, it's, it's targeting something very specific. So when somebody just generally hears that, they're the ones putting their hands up. And quite often, people are self-selecting. So for me, it's just a game of staying top of mind. And people know that I'm an SEO. And... Uh, I mean, you've looked at my Instagram. I don't even post a lot of business stuff. I'm just, I'm top of mind and people know that, that I, or they, they know somebody that needs it. I tend to come up. Now there is one other factor here that I have. I do have a referral program. So if somebody does close with me, um, so let's say, I don't know, I'm having beers with my buddy, uh, on a Friday night and he's like, Hey, I know a business owner that might need SEO. Um, I offer 20% front end and then 10% recurring for the lifetime of the client. So if he sends me a $2,000 client, I'm going to pay him $400 the first month and then $200 recurring completely passive to him just for giving me the lead. And most of my clients have come from that to be completely honest. It, it's, it's grassroots, but again, you only need 10 good clients at two G's a month to have a $20,000 a month business. Like you don't need a zillion clients to make it happen. Totally. The math is pretty simple there. And I love what you're saying about relationships too, because that's what I hammer home with all of my students in the beginning. It's not about just like, oh, I got to start this big YouTube channel and I got to be, you know, be hard in Facebook groups and stuff like that. And that's good. And oh. that, that can amplify that. But getting your first couple clients is going to be from your own social circle, your own network 100%. of some kind, right? It's going to be from you phoning up your buddy who you know is like, has a lot of friends who are your target customer and just like, having a beer with him or something like that. And if you just constantly like make people aware of what you're doing, then as long as you are actually a good person and you have those good relationships, then you're going to get business from that. And that's way easier than starting, you know, SEO for your own website. That takes months and months yeah. to get any traction with SEO and a YouTube channel. Same thing. It just takes a lot, a lot of consistent effort to get any real results from that. Yeah. So your first results are almost certainly going to be, from your own network. I love that you touched upon that. Yeah. And I think the, the reality is, is there is no reality. If, if somebody's watching this YouTube channel right now and they're interested in some version of digital marketing, if you just like took a pen and paper and ignore even charging people and wrote down 10 people that own, that own businesses that, you know, like your uncle, you know, you know, the, the deli down the street where you, you've been buying sandwich meat for the last 10 years. Like, you know 10 people that own businesses that need digital marketing in some fashion. Just write those 10 people down. And if you're really scared, be like, can I run your Facebook ads for a month? Can I SEO your site for free? Can I redesign your, like whatever it takes, do it for free even just to get the case study, just to get your feet wet. And like once you've gotten a result, like it's like the, before you've ever run a Facebook ad, you're scared, right? But once you've run a Facebook ad and like had a click to a website or like an add to cart or a purchase, you're like, oh shit, this is real. So get through that as quick as possible. Get a result for somebody for free. Once you've got that behind you, it'll have the confidence to actually go into another business owner and sell it. Yeah. And like, don't underestimate the power of helping out people in your network too, because like, I'll use the example of you, D1. Like I know you as the SEO guy, so I'll ping you up whenever there's some crazy SEO problem I'm dealing with and you've helped me out a lot. And so whenever there's people that ask me about SEO, first person I think of is D1 and I'm gonna be like, yeah, would you like an intro to my friend D1? He's the freaking SEO guy. Yeah, yeah, and, and being collaborative. This is, the agency world's interesting. Like I'm friends with three other SEOs and I'm sharing everything I'm doing with them. They're sharing with me. And if you're in an abundance mentality, we're never going to run into each other. Like you don't have to be afraid of competition in this, you know, and in, in, in other businesses, like, you know, let's just use Amazon, right? Oh, I don't want you to know my product. I don't want you to know my niche. This is the opposite. You can be out there and be proud about what you do. And you're exactly right. Like 
if, if I need somebody for, for Amazon photography or videography or copy, you're going to be the first person I know. So it's like, because of one relationship, Danny, you've got access to my entire network. And likewise, I've got, so, so it, it is a relationship game. It's, it's, if you're going to be running an agency and hiding behind the screen, uh, I hate to say it's probably the wrong business, but if you're, if you're into nurturing relationships, it's one of the best businesses, I believe. Yeah, I absolutely believe that as well. And let's just flip scripts a little bit here. And I sure. want to hear about one of your big hard lessons that you've learned throughout this whole digital mm. marketing journey here. Like what is, what is a story that comes to mind where you just got slapped really hard and you learned a very valuable lesson from that mistake? Oh man, it seems like every day there's a new slap. That's the, that's the reality. Um, <laughs> what was the big, okay. I, I'm, and I'm talking for uh, like, let's say you're running SEO or Facebook ads or, or something like that. Um, charging too little money will kill you. Uh, there was a time when I, I think I had 10 or 12 clients. I think my average was like maybe 800 or a thousand dollars and, um, not pricing my time. Like right now internally when I'm, and this is being really transparent, I'm trying to average about $150 an hour for actual work done in the agency, like internally when I'm pricing a client. So, um, that allows me to, you know, cost of acquisition. Uh, that allows me to hire excellent team members who are actually really good at what they do. And then it also helps me justify an income goal, right? So if I want to make 300 grand a year working 40 hours a week, that's $150 an hour. So it kind of gives me like a nice kind of metric. But um, I ran into the issue where I just kept saying, yes, yes, I'm going to take clients on. Yes, I'm going to help you. And, and it, from a place of love, right? Like I really did want to help them. And these thousand dollar a month clients, all of a sudden I had 10, 10 or 12 clients. I can't quite remember the number. And uh, I couldn't escape because there's so much work that needs to be done. But I priced it too cheap that I couldn't afford to hire somebody. And, and my bills were, I mean, they were still pretty decent. And I was like caught in this loop of like, well, shit, I need more money to hire somebody. But I can't take on any more work because they like, I, I have no more time. And it just it started this really bad treadmill. And, uh, to answer your question, other than the pricing thing, like I had no time for self love either. So I was actually 30 pounds heavier than I am right now. And I was just grinding myself. Like, like I just, I saw no way out. It was like this velvet handcuff, uh, hamster wheel. And, um, I ended up getting lucky if you want to call it that. And a couple clients dropped off. And I had no choice but to just to sell at a higher price. And, um, you know, so I think I closed like a $3,000 or $3,500 a month client. And as soon as I tasted that breathing room of like, I can serve this client because we had more of a budget. I didn't have to be like sneaky or like, like really ninja with what I was doing. It's like we had a budget to do the thing properly, right? Like it shifted everything for me. And uh, shortly after that, I basically cleared out 50 or 60% of my clients because I just had that trust, like that abundance, like, Oh shit, these type of clients do exist. I just have to target that. And that's what allowed me to eventually get a team in place and, and work on what that with what I do best, which is a strategy in sales. Um, when you first start the agency, you're wearing every hat, right? You're doing, you're doing the stuff you're doing sales, you're doing accounting, you're doing HR. So you might be strong at one thing. Maybe you're really strong at the technical, but you're not good at the communication or if you're like me, I'm, far stronger on the communication sales and strategy, but sitting behind the computer for eight hours a day is not my jam. You know, um, you have to have a plan to be able to afford somebody to come in and, and cover your weakness would be kind of my biggest, my biggest advice. And, and I know a lot of agency owners are, are stuck in that sort of eight to 10 client hamster wheel. Uh, and there's no way out because they didn't price price high enough. Yeah. No, and that's something that I think so many people struggle with in the beginning, because if you don't have that confidence in, in what you're doing, you're just starting out, then trying to charge people a high amount of money is just in your brain. That's not going to work. Right. So I think it's very yeah. common for most people to price their services way lower than they actually should be pricing them. And one thing to keep in mind, you touched on it is 
just because you can make, you know, you're okay with making a thousand dollars a month from two or three clients and that's enough to pay your bills. Think about where that's going to grow. Like, is that going to allow you enough money to actually hire the team and to expand the company in the way you do things? Because if your pricing model works for the army of you, that does not mean it's going to work for the army of you plus three or the army of you plus 10. It, the pricing model has to, has to change as you scale up the company, right? Yeah. And I, um, so when I, when I say, you know, $150 an hour, people think, oh my God, that's crazy. Right. But, uh, the way that I look at it, um, so let's just take a $2,000 a month client. Okay. Just to keep the numbers nice and easy. When I look at pricing them, I'm like, okay, 50% of that is going to go to fulfilling it, the delivery. Okay. So boom, a thousand dollars already gone about a month. And then, um, and then I'll say 50% again, we'll go to taxes and everything else. So really when I'm seeing a $2,000 a month client, in my mind, it's like, oh, I'm only making 500. Um, it keeps me honest in terms of I don't get like super excited when I see a big number, but it also leaves me like wiggle room that if something does go weird with a client, uh, either I can pay out of my own pocket or we can hire another specialist in or I can afford to bring somebody else that's working on another project in without it sinking the ship. So. Um, it doesn't always work, but it, it allows me just that flexibility and calmness that there is room versus, you know, it's a thousand dollar a month client and I have to work 20 hours a week for them. Shit. Like by the time it's all done, it's like, I did all this work for $250. Like, was it really worth that, that mental bandwidth? The answer is probably not. And it's probably a better client for me to work with. Absolutely. And so as we come to the end of our interview here, do you want where yeah. do you see your agency growing? Like what I know you're, you're someone who's not really motivated by money and doing that. And you're much more motivated by just having the lifestyle that you want to achieve. Right. So where do you see yourself growing this agency to in, in 2020 and beyond? Yeah. So I'll, um, this is kind of the business model I'm at now. It's, it's, uh, not something that'll be easy for somebody just starting, but to kind of give you an idea of where it can head. Um, my primary income stream now is actually, uh, Rev share with clients. So um, we take a fairly heavy monthly retainer on the front end and, um, and I've been consistently negotiating 10% top line revenue. So if a client is making a hundred thousand dollars a month, um, I'm taking 10,000 of that on top of our retainer. And the beauty is, is that I get to really have a long, deep relationship with the client. I get full control basically to manage their stores or, or business in that way. And, um, that's, that's really where I see my agency. I mean, we've got two clients right now that are on that. Um, and I'd like to maybe get three more and, and that's it. And we just, you know, run the game with these clients for the next three to five years or whatever that looks like. And, um, you know, these clients become friends, you know, they're almost like brothers. I don't know how to explain it. You know, uh, we're, we're sending memes at, at 2 AM sometimes on a Friday and it's like my, my life has become fun. You know, it's, this is, these are people's businesses that I really care about. I care about their product. I care about their mission. Um, I get to do what I love to do, which is help amplify great messages anyways. But uh, in terms of where I see the agency, it's, it's a very easy scale to say 50, 60, 70 K a month, um, which is enough for me to have a great team uh, to, to enjoy the lifestyle that I want. Um, and then maybe put one or two of my own products in that, uh, in that pipeline as well. But um, that's really where I see it. Um, and again, that's, it's not necessarily for everybody, but the performance based marketing, uh, allows you to get paid what, what you're worth, you know? And, um, uh, it definitely is a little bit of a longer sell, but, uh, I find the business owners that do actually say yes to that. They're, they're vested to win with you. So I think it's a beautiful win-win for me. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's definitely a good model, but like you said, probably not the best one to start with. Like once you know, that you absolutely can deliver the results that you're going for. Like you don't want to put your own rent check on something that you don't know you can deliver and are confident in delivering. Yes. Right. Yes. So like once you got your stuff figured out, you know, you're the best in the game, you know that you can deliver the results, then yes. you can tie your results to your compensation with the client. And then it's a win for both parties. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I think anybody starting an agency, uh, if I was to go back in time and tell myself, um, like what I would do over, uh, Focus on getting to 10K a month as quick as possible, but make sure that there is enough margin there to bring on a team member to hire your weakness at that around 10K a month mark. Uh, if that's all you focus on, 
I, again, 60 to 90 days, you can have a six figure business that's completely digital. And the reality is we are all right now experiencing this quarantine in one way or another. People are getting used to, sh to shopping online. Business owners are, are having to embrace the, the shop online, deliver online. Um, and people that are skilled in, in digital marketing, specifically traffic in my case, that's what I do. Everybody's going to need customers coming out of this. Every, everybody. And what better place to be in than this? So, um, you know, Danny, you helping people move into the agency model, I think, I think is an amazing gift. Um, yeah, bro, that's kind of all I got to say on that. But I just, it, it really is there. It really is. Yeah, man, that's the mic drop right there. And I love what you're saying, Diwan, because your advice is always from such a place of like, honesty and integrity that I think is a rare thing in, in the digital marketing space a lot yeah. of the time. Like a lot of the stuff you're hearing from all these YouTubers and stuff like that is just, it's not coming from a place of integrity. It's coming from a place of, I want you to believe what I'm saying so that you will purchase my info product, right? Yeah. This is coming from someone who has, has been through some rough shit and has seen some success on the other side of that, right? So you, yeah. you really understand how the game is played on you know, an emotional intelligence level, which I think is, is really good for the listeners to hear. But yeah. man, this has been an awesome interview. I know it's really valuable for the, for the uh, listeners here. If they want to reach out to you or learn more about you online, where's the best place for them to do that? Uh, right now, my Instagram at D1 Bainey is probably the best place to, uh, to hit me up. Uh, I'm probably a little bit too active there, to be honest. But um, yeah, Instagram would be my best. Um, YouTube channel is there. I haven't really put out content in quite some time. But um, yeah, I would say my Instagram or YouTube is kind of the best place to hit me up. And uh, yeah, if there's any way I can help anybody that's, that's executing out there, um, fire me a DM. I'd probably reply. Awesome, man. Well, thanks so much for coming on here. And guys, if you are looking for any of the resources we mentioned in this episode, you can find that at the show notes, dannycarlson.co slash podcast. And the links to deal on Instagram and YouTube channel will all be over there. And if you haven't left a review already for the podcast, would really appreciate that. It is very difficult to get people to go on their phone over to the iTunes app or the Stitcher app. Um, it's actually almost impossible to leave a review on Android app. It has to be on Stitcher for some reason. I don't know who created this thing, but Stitcher or iTunes, really appreciate that, guys. And until next time, go out there, kick some ass. Thanks for joining us on the Danny Carlson Podcast. For resources mentioned in this episode, visit dannycarlson.co.